So, so I know the people are very poor, very, very poor. They don't have alternative. Only they can grow and monsoon rise. They have to migrate to the urban areas and other cities. How many people are we talking about? About 20 million people uh, we are talking about. Rice is the staple crop here. This is one of the world's poorest but most populous nations. And like Bolivia, it's appealing for help, for $5 billion for better defences. We have to raise the yeah, height of the embankment. Again... Uh, Can you afford to do that? Uh, you know, we need uh, support from the international community. It's a constant battle. The men toiling in the mud and Bangladesh is banking on the Copenhagen summit to produce some aid. Just like Bangladesh, Bolivia sees itself as a victim of climate change. I'm in the village of Capi, high in the Andes, where the big worry is water, as the glaciers retreat in the mountains here. Now, if the research is right, the root cause of this is greenhouse gas, the pollution given off by the biggest industries. They're a very long way from here. But scientists say that if we're to head off the worst effects of global warming, those gases must be cut. Sounds easy, it isn't. West Virginia and another part of a mountain is blasted away. This is an operation to reach coal. America gets half its electricity from burning coal, but it's the dirtiest fossil fuel and demand is growing. China depends on coal as well. It's going through the most aggressive economic growth in human history. Poland and a giant machine claws at the seams of coal here. This is how Poland gets nearly all its electricity. Modern life also revolves around oil. Near Houston in Texas, birthplace of the modern oil industry, they keep finding more. And it's here that resistance is strongest to action on global warming, where there's the greatest skepticism about the role of carbon dioxide. The question is, how much difference does CO2 really make in our atmosphere? And that question should be debated. There are a lot of climate drivers. You can see the sun shining on my face right now. You know, the sun obviously is one of the biggest climate drivers. It goes through many cycles. That view is completely at odds with mainstream science. The UN's climate panel, the IPCC, says it is very likely greenhouse gases are behind most of the recent warming. But if people won't cut their emissions or can't, is there some way to limit the damage? One idea is to compensate for the pollution, to pay another part of the world to lock up the carbon dioxide in forests. The view from a tree as it's being felled. Ghana has lost four-fifths of its rainforest. And this kind of destruction is happening throughout the tropics. 
In fact, nearly a fifth of all greenhouse gases come from deforestation. So how about trying to reverse that? Well, here in the west of Ghana, they're planting a new forest, the first of 23 million trees. And they're paying for it by selling carbon credits, pollution permits. The aim, if you can picture it, is for the biggest polluters thousands of miles away in the developed world to help pay for the forest. It's a controversial idea. So big money could help restore the forests. But some resent that, saying rich countries shouldn't offload their carbon problem onto the developing world. It, it feels fundamentally wrong for developed countries and their consumers to shift the responsibility of mitigating the effects of climate change to developing countries. Another great tree is brought down. The arguments over this continue. And while they do, how else can greenhouse gases be cut? Well, outside Seville in Spain, there's this spectacular solar power station. Its giant mirrors generate power without pollution, but it's early days to know how well it works. Wind turbines are springing up, but at the moment they're relatively expensive and they're not always popular. And nuclear power is making a comeback. It is low carbon, but dealing with the radioactive waste is pricey and politically difficult. about green fuel. These paddle wheels in the California desert are stirring vast pools of algae. This lurid green is normally something you'd want to avoid, but here they're cultivating the microscopic plants. Algae contains oil, which can be extracted and turned into fuel. Serious money is now flowing into this research. This lab is in San Diego, which is billing itself as a green Houston. Algae fuel has been produced here, and this firm believes it has a future. There is a way to both stimulate our economy, uh, be mindful about our environment, and develop new energy products that we can use sustainably for the next 50 to 100 years. Um, and I believe algae is one of those ways to do it. So what's the world going to do? Well, it's 12 years since the Kyoto Protocol, the only treaty attempting to tackle climate change. But it didn't include the two biggest polluters, America and China. And anyway, it runs out in 2012. Countries of the world have been meeting every year to discuss a new treaty. 